button, the mute, the mute button will go on. Exactly. Hi, Andy. Oh, Andy. Who has all those pumpkins? Come back to mom. Hi, can you see my chin? Can you see my chin? The best for the holidays. All right. Now there's an echo. Hello, everyone. Here I am. So, how are you? Shabbat Shalom, friends. Ah, the quiet, the peace of Shabbat. How oh, beautiful. So we're going to start services now. So Shabbat Shalom, and we'll see Shabbat you. Shalom. We'll see you in the heart. Shir Hamalot B'Shuv Adonai Het Shivat Zion Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're on page 635. And although it starts off a little scary with all that Hebrew, it ends on the most perfect wording, just with Shabbat Shalom. So you'll get this. We start with Shir Hamalot. Shir Hamalot B'Shuv Adonai here we go. Shama Shalom, Shama Shalom, Shama Shalom, Shama Shalom. It's kind of nice because, in a way, musically, if you think about it, it feels like a beautiful rainbow when you're singing it. So try this. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Cantor, I love that you decided to open with that beautiful psalm because I love it. it. It says that that when God brings back all of the exiles to Zion, we'll be like dreamers. And we're going to have like in our mouths, we're going to have laughter and on our tongues, we're going to have joy. And I love thinking about that we get to be in some ways taken back from the exile of our crazy world and to be able to have this time of Shabbat where we get to dream, where we get to have joy and laughter amongst us. I also love that in this time we have, this is Shabbat Noah. So we have this whole idea of the ark and the storm. And I like that Shabbat is not something that we have to build into an ark, but it is an ark that's already there for us, just waiting for us to step in and just glide through the storm of our lives, the craziness of this world, just glide for a little bit over 24 hours in the joy and the love and the dreaminess of Shabbat. What a beautiful thing on this Shabbat that we can kindle the light of Shabbat, where we say that we recreate the world in some ways every Shabbat in the vision of joy and beauty and dream by being able to bring in the light one by one, the two candles for Shabbat. So I invite you to turn uh, to page 120 as we kindle the lights of Shabbat. Perfect. 
Ready? Let's bring the light towards us. Arochata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Kedishanu B'mitzvotav Etzivanu Lehad Likner Lehad Likner Shel Shabbat I love how we do this um, with an element of peace in most homes. In ours, there was a little bit of elbowing during the candle lighting. Not always uh, the pleasure that we all get. And I am so excited and honored to call now Ian Schwartz, who becomes Bar Mitzvah next week with his parents, Denise and Mark. Where's your sister? And Elena in spirit. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I love it. You know, exactly. We get She's the been there, done that. And we're very well. <laughs> and so we turn now to page 123. If you're able, please rise. Okay. Are we doing it? Right. Okay, Ian, whenever you're okay. ready. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Amen. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Oh, should I read the next part too? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who finding favor with us, sanctified us of mitzvot, in love and favor, you made, you made the holy Shabbat our heritage as a reminder of the work of creation. As first among our sacred days, it recalls the exodus from Egypt. You chose us and set us apart from the peoples. In love and in favor, you have given us your holy Shabbat as an inheritance. Praise to you, Adonai, who sanctifies Shabbat. Beautiful. Baruch atah Adonai mekadesh ha-Shabbat. Ian, mazel tov. We look forward to seeing you on the Bima. L'chaim. We turn now to pages 138 and 139 for Lachad Dodi. And when we get to those final verses, if we're able, we rise again to welcome in the Sabbath bride. Lachad Dodi, Likrat Kala, Pnei Shabbat Nikavela. Lachad Dodi, Likrat Kala, Pnei Shabbat. Unless you rise, we all know that. Please rise. Go we vishalom mater at bala, gam basimcha uto hola, to hemune
welcoming each Shabbat like that. And I feel like as we turn to page 142 for Shalom Alechem, where we welcome in the Sabbath angels, I loved Lily Kornblum's teaching to us uh, many weeks ago now about how we can be for each other messengers of peace. So I invite you to spend some time wishing each other Shabbat Shalom over any witch chat um, to be able to spread these blessings of peace all around our community. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elyon. Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Boachem Shalom, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elyon. Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim. Kadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hu Nil Shalom Malachi Hasharit Malachi Elyon Mi Melech Malachi Hamlachim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Seitchem Shalom Malachi Hasharit Malachi Elyon Mi Melech Malachi we turn to page 146 and rise if we're able for the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai Baruch Adonai HaMivorach Le'olam Shema Yisrael Adonai Continue to sing with us the Vea Hafta, this beautiful melody from Debbie Friedman to bring us back into that ease of the ark, the ease of some of us, some, for some of us, our childhood, remembering how we can be able to have all these words on our hearts, in our souls, and pass them on to our children. Is there one more page before this, po possibly? Possibly another page? <laughs> Oh, yeah. And you... Well, they're very beautiful, Rabbi. It's all beautiful. All beautiful. As we there we go. Of, That's the one. <gasps> we love Adonai, our God. And you shall love Adonai, your God, with all your heart your soul and with all your might and these words which I command you on this day shall be in your heart shall be in your heart and you shall teach them diligently unto your children shall speak of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way and when you rise up and 
we have that first beautiful sign of a covenant between God and humanity, which is the rainbow that appears in the sky after all of the rains dry up for us to know that God will never again wipe out all of humanity through a flood. That was the first sign that God made to all of humanity. And that God continued to be with us. And God showed then other miracles to be able to save us in each and every age. And so when we sing on page 158, the Mihamocha, we remember that great miracle that God did by parting the sea to be able to make sure that we were redeemed and could then be able to see that every age, God does different things to be able to bring about redemption. And more than that, we made in the image of God then act like God to be able to bring about redemption for each and every person it takes a lot of work. And that's what we're reminded to do with our Micha Mocha. <laughs> As we imagine ourselves as Noah felt being saved with the ark and being able to float through turbulent storms, every night we pray that God will be able to spread over us a shelter of peace, a sukkot shalom, so that we wake up feeling renewed and rejoicing in life. Page 160, Hashki Venu. Hashki Venu Adonai. Eloheinu l'shalom, v'hamideinu shomreinu l'chaim. Hashkiveinu Adonai, Eloheinu l'shalom, v'hamideinu shomreinu l'chaim. Ushmo tzeiteinu, uvoeinu l'chaim u'shalom. You know this part. Hashkiveinu Adonai, Eloheinu l'shalom, v'hamideinu shomreinu l'chaim. Hashkiveinu Adonai, Eloheinu l'shalom, v'hamideinu shomreinu l'chaim. 
We turn to page 164 and rise in spirit for our Amida. Adonai sifatai tita ufia gita hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Aruchata Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Abotenu, Vimotenu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Isara, Elohe Rika, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leia, El Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanora, El Elion, Gomel, Hasarim, Tovim, Bekone, Akod, Vizofer, Haspe Avot, Vimahot, Umivi Gula, Libne, Brehem, Leman, Shemo, Miahava, Melachose, Moshia, Umagin, Aruchata, Adonai, Magin, Abraham, Vizrat, Sara, Atagi, Borle, Lamadonai, Mechaye, Akolatara, Moshia, Mashi, Haru, Ahun, Mori, Hagashem, Mechakel, Haim, Mechase, Mechaye, Akol, Berraham, Rabbi. So mech nochlim verofe holim, um matir asurim, um mekaye mamunato, lishene afar, miha moha al giburot, um mido mela, melech me meet, um mekaye, um mats me achishua, venemata Aruchata Adonai Mechaye HaKol Ata Kadosh Bishimcha Kadosh Ukeoshim Bechol Yom Yalulu Chasela Aruchata Adonai Ha'el HaKadosh May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. We continue with our silent prayer. And when you're finished with our silent prayer, please be seated. Shalom, shalom, in Roma. Who ya say shalom, Malenu? They are called Israel. They rule, Amen. Who ya say shalom, Malenu? Shalom Aleinu Ve'al kol Yisrael Amen oh, I know that, uh, that we all know the story with Noah but Noah first sent out a raven who circled and circled trying to look for dry land couldn't find any in return and then there was the dove that circled once around and came back, still hadn't found dry land, and then went out another time. And the way that that dove showed that there was dry land was by showing that olive branch. 
And I don't know if any of you have, have ever been to orchards where there are the olive trees, but there, I, during college, worked on a kibbutz uh, up in the north of Israel. And when I was there, um, everything on that kibbutz revolved around the olives. Uh, so that we, we picked olives and then we had a zaitia, we had a factory that was all about being able to take those olives, count those olives, do all of those things that we needed to do. And I loved that our entire community was all built around being able to have and, and nurture the sign for peace. And what I love about this is that when we ask for, um, for somebody's healing, we say, may they have a refuah shlema. And some of us say that that's a complete healing. But we can also say that we pray that they have a healing in which they know peace. That maybe they're not going, that maybe it's a chronic illness, they're never going to completely recover from it. Or maybe this is something that, that they will never recover from, but they can still find peace. And I think that this is a community like I was on in college, where we're a community that's built on bringing each other peace. And so in this time, when we think about those who are in need of healing, needing the peace that comes with healing, not a cure, but peace in their illness, I invite you to share their names. You can unmute and share their names either verbally or you can share their names in the, in the chat. Karen Platt. Stevie Mox. Ira, Ira Salzer. Wheeler. And Liviana Bree Salzer. And Ira Salzer. Ruben Costa Rosevsky, Carlos Tavares. Martha Tranto. Eight Mark Litsky. We add to those names Marge Hilliard, Don Sable, Jim Clemens, Ruthie Feldman, Barbara Sussman, Lynn Shalek, Melissa Josephs, Sarah Rauschwarg, Judy Miller, Gary Schroeder, Cynthia Johnson, Elizabeth DeBrun, and Alec Jaladin, Rebecca Luker, Pam Stevens, Jed Snyder, Harriet Melrose, Sarah Fisher, Dee Dee Cohn, Eric Boyd, Avner Drucker, June Ryans and Dan, Danny Schulman, Pam Pizzicaro, Charlotte Berlin, Greg Wintz, Carol Curry, Richard Colbert, Shelley Campagna, and Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. We add the names of those who are joining us on Facebook. They've added Florence Bernberg, Hazel Golden Lee, and Joseph Guccione, as well as Sandy Schwartz. We depart from the usual way that we sing Misha Berach. It's good for us. It keeps our prayers fresh. So here we say, Adonai, love me, heal us, find any ways. Adonai, love me, Adonai, love me, Adonai. Love us, 
please love us. I don't know. So this week's Torah portion always reminds you of a, a funny moment. You see, according to my parents, I came home from preschool at my home temple singing about a little known and fascinating fact about this week's Torah portion. I came home joyfully singing, who built the ark? No one, no one, who built the ark? No one built the ark. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how my preschool mind uh, wrapped my head around this. No one built this ark. This magical ark that carried animals two by twosies. It was either not made by anyone or just appeared. Maybe the story went terribly wrong. God chooses Noah, a man who is righteous in his generation. God tells him, save your family and seven pairs of every kosher animal and two pairs of every non-kosher animal because as God tells Noah, there's a huge flood coming. But according to my preschool telling of the story, Noah does nothing, no one built the ark, end of story, end of world, I guess. Well, clearly the story of Noah doesn't end that way. And neither does this week's Torah portion that is named after him. Tucked away at the end of this week's Torah portion, after, of course, no one has built the ark, a small, fascinating story about what Noah's descendants did in the generations after the flood is found. We read, all the earth had the same language and the same words. They came upon the valley of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them hard. They said, come, let us build a city with a tower that reaches to the sky so that we can make a name for ourselves and not be scattered all over the earth. In the form of a midrash, we get some kind of horrific details that are added to the story. This Midrash, this extra, uh, extra Torah uh, words or story explains, many years passed in the building of the tower. It reached so great a height that it took a year to mount to the top. A brick, therefore, was more precious in the sight of the builders than a human being, because each and every brick was carried all the way up to the top by a special person. But if this person fell down and met their death, no one took notice of it. But if a brick dropped, they wept, because it would take a whole year to replace that brick to get that brick all the way up to the top where it was sitting. So intent were they upon accomplishing their purpose that they would not permit a pregnant woman to interrupt herself in her work of brick making, even when she went into labor. Molding bricks as she gave birth to her child and tying it round, tying her child round in a sheet, she went on molding bricks. The difficulty in this Midrash is profound. The way that people treated each other in this story was with such little regard that the bricks took precedence over humans. Rabbi Dan Moskowitz points out the great sin of the Tower of Babel's builders was that they treated people like bricks and bricks like people. They wasted the one thing that set them 
apart from machines, which had they existed in ancient times could have helped build the tower even better, but they neglected their own humanity. They put the bricks over humanity. When the bricks of our life become more important than the people in it, then we too build a tower that is an affront to the purpose of our creation. People and our human beings need to always be at the core of our work, our goals and our successes. How does this affect people? Not what does this build, but how are the people affected by what this builds? Building great things can, 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 some, can, eh, can come with sacrifice, whether it's building a company, a building, or a nation. And we remember these people who have put this time and sacrifice into these things. When building a building, when building a business, one often sacrifices time, time with friends, time with family, time with loved ones. When the Sears Tower here in Chicago is built, the race to construct the world's third largest tower claimed the lives of five workers in the process. In the building of this great nation, we know that so much of our country was built on the backs of slaves who get almost no credit for the profit that they drove to America. Humans built these. It wasn't bricks, it wasn't steel girders, it wasn't cotton. It was humans that built these. And in this moment, we're, we're in like a Babel-like moment of our years. We have to look around and remember how we measure success on this hopefully very skewed towards human spectrum. Where is our success? Is it maybe too close to bricks than we'd like? Are we really firmly in humans as our markers of success? Are we more focused on the bricks or the people? Will this moment this political moment continue to divide us so much that like in Babel, our common language is confounded and we can no longer speak to each other? Will we continue to see the humans as humans or are we too brick-like already putting people into boxes? In the season, in this season of voting, we're asking ourselves, what it is that we treasure. The marks that we make on our ballots should reflect what we find precious. Whether you mail in your ballot, whether you go to any of those early voting locations, whether you show up on election day, it's upon each of us to measure the weight of the human and the weight of the brick and see how do they measure up against each other in this time? May these times of important, critically important choices be ones that bring us together, keep us whole, lift up humanity, and not separate us as in Babel. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We will build this world from love. And you must build this world from love. And if we build this world from love, then God will build this world with love. Thank you, Cantor. And thank you for the messages. It is, it is a reminder that we are under the two week mark to vote. Uh, this deeply important thing. So make sure that you have your plan 
and know how you are going to vote. Uh, this is the most important thing and bring your friends, bring your family with you, keep them at a six foot distance if they don't live with you, but bring them along with you. And it is upon us, it is Aleinu. And so we turn to page 586 for the words of Aleinu L'Shabeach as we rise. Aleinu L'Shabeach Ladon Hakol Latet Grula Lyotze Breshit Shelo Asanu Kyoye Haratzor Velo Samanu Kmishpachot Adama Shelo Sam Chelkenu Kahem Begor Aleinu Kechol Hamonam Vanachnu korim, mumishtachavim, mumodim, lipne melech, mache hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu, the nemar, the hayanunai, the melech al koharetz, hayom hahu, hayom hahu, ki adonai echad, ushmo, ushmo, ushmo. A reading by Muriel Rukeyser. When I am dead, even then, I will still love you. I will wait in these poems. When I am dead, even then, I am still listening to you. I will be making poems for you out of silence. Silence will be falling into that silence, and it is, it is building music. On this Shabbat, we are thinking of those who have passed away in this last month, known as Shloshim. Thinking of Ronald Wolf, Seymour Kessler, Elaine Stone Colburn, Hal Buddy Doon, Richard Mandel, Marvin Einhorn, Barbara J. Frankston. Harriet Evnen, Edward Richmond, Socorro Soko Ruiz, as well as those whose yard sites are observed in this week now ending. Burton Bart Barish, Eloise Bell, Gladys Blatt, Erwin Blitt, William Bomchill, Diane Bell Brown, Louis L. Cohen, Dr. David Kornbleet, Al Dobrin, Irene Friedlieb, Jerome Gerstel, Gloria Goldstein, Molly Goodman, Ruth Grossman, Laurel Krulwich, Leo Lichtenberg, Fanny Lipman, Fanny Gartenberg Lowe, Queenie Stanley Lustig, Joseph Nemero, Don I. Phillips, Jeannie Platt, Lena Rabin, Sheldon H. Robinson, Leonard Rosenbaum, Charles Samsky, Evelyn Silverstein, David Snyder, William Stern, Blanche May Sipe Washam, Michael Weber, Norman Weinstein, and Sam Wolf. And if there are those here in our community who wish to unmute and share a name, you may do so or add them to the chat either in Zoom or on Facebook. Howard Piat. Jim Friedman. Otta Stock. Barbara Rich. Aaron Stein. John M. Griffith and Richard Seaman. Judd Weinberg, Florence Teutcher, and Jamie Redford. And Barbara we Solomon. Add... Thank you, excuse me. Barbara Solomon. And we add to those names, Barry Sloan, Barbara Rich, Paltiel Bach, Richard Yamada, Donald Sipes, Susan Sipes, and Janet Sipes, Dr. Margaret Gerber, Barbara Solomon, and Bob McVeigh. And for all of them, those whose names, as well as Leonard O'Ringer, for all those names that are said aloud and those whose names we hold in our heart, we extol God's name with the words of Kadisha Tom on page 198 as we rise.
Yitkadal v'yitkadash shmei rabba. V'yalma divrach yirutei v'yamlich malchutei. V'chayachon v'yom echon v'chayye d'chol b'yit Yisrael ba'agalau b'zman kari v'imru. Yehe shmei rabba m'varach le'olam u'lamei al-maya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh. V'yitadar v'yitalev v'yitalal shmei d'kudisha v'ruichu. Le'ela min kol v'rchata v'shirata. Jush v'chata v'nechamata. D'amiran v'yalma v'imru. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya v'chayim alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Ose shalom v'mromav. Kuyase shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. Ose shalom v'imru amav. Kuyase shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. Before we close with our closing song, which I uh, so deeply look forward to, uh, continuing to hear Cantor's voice, uh, that classic words of a don't alum. Uh, next week, uh, I invite you to join us right back here. Uh, next week is the Women of Temple Sholem's Pink Shabbat, which is gonna honor, support, and inform our temple community with special readings and a guest speaker for Breast and Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. And we invite you to wear pink uh, next week. Uh, so I'll wear this jacket again. We invite you to wear pink for Shabbat next week in celebration. And we close with, with those classic words of Adon alum on page 625. Unless everyone, it's something different. Everyone, <laughs> I haven't done this version in a long, long time. Now I have a feeling, I hope, when I start doing it, that for some of you, it is going to spark something in you, a memory, maybe a trip to Israel. I don't know, but here we go. It's a tough one. I don't know love Malach but I'm Yet <laughs> Shalom, everyone.